An extra spicy game means an extra special caster. The Poro King going to be joining myself and Ox for game two of this best of three, which saw a Go Rogue take down Mouse Esports. Our Mouse Sports. I'm after Cardinal Sin there. Cardinal, Cardinal <laughs> oh, Sin. But I know with that. Oh, the Dock region is going to be on, my, uh, on me for a long time now for that. But I think the main takeaways from that game is Leader was completely nullified in that mid lane despite getting a 2-0 advantage. But I think that's the thing. You look at his other picks, you look at the Echo, the Silas, they likes to lean on the Aurelia. You make those 2-0, I fully believe Leader would have been able to take over the game. But on the casting, there wasn't enough early impact, taking a bit too long to scale. And we saw a lot of these plays we saw that Mouse were challenging, but then they opted just to leave Leader in a side lane. They knew he needed to scale. And from this draft phase, I want to see something more relevant early for Leader. And I want to see Mouse's aggression matched in their picks. Absolutely. I think that's, you know, kind of a perfect way to summarize it is that every time there was a team fight with people from Mouse dying, Leader was taking a tower in a side lane because he needed to get that gold. He needed to get up to level 16 to become that monster. And the, a go rogue, all credit to them, just didn't give him that time. Yep, didn't give them that space and they look to punish on the bot lane with Globals, who obviously can't use it to assist themselves. And Critically Obsessed wasn't in position, as Cadel highlighted, wasn't there to support. So there's definitely a mouse, and we saw that in those skirmishes, that can find a game, but we need to see them come out with it now. We do have similar bans coming through, but the Skarna has been banned away by Mouse Sports, and the Ash something that is huge for Woolite. Bands all coming in there from Mouse Sports. We actually see the Akali again, no real surprise there. And the Caitlyn and the Shen again. So if not changing broke, up. Don't fix it. Yep, yeah, I was going to say, even on the wrong side of the rift, they are still going to go with the Shen, the Akali, and the Caitlyn, which now puts a lot of pressure on the Mouse Sports. What do you look for here? Calista has been left open. That's a big thing. Them being on red side, they are the ones who have to ban the Caitlyn. So the Calista is available, and Mouse Sports have shown they will first pick this Calista. They will put that emphasis down in the bot lane. We'll have to see if they're going to come out with it here, but I wouldn't be too surprised. Taking this all the way to the end. Actually got a high priority to set. And where does this live a go, Rogue? Fair enough, that set is a very big flex. Can go jungle, mid, top, support. Can go a hell of a lot of places, but you've left up so much. Yeah, so for Mouse Sports, I expect it to go between jungle and support. That's where they've mostly been playing it. It is a bit contested pick between Zanzara and Obsess. A lot of games from both, and it allows early skirmishing. I think the reason they're not prioritizing that cluster right now is because they know that Woolite won't necessarily pick it up himself. And already straight in, lock in the top and jungle for the side of a go rogue. They are going to go for the Renekton and the Sejuani. Sejuani kind of slipped away from the meta a little bit as we move towards those hard farming junglers, which not that she's bad, but it's far more of a higher percentage win with but the Zanzara hard farmers. doesn't really care about that. We don't see him playing as much of the farming junglers for this team, despite the fact he does practice them in solo queues. He's been playing a lot of Hecarim, a lot of Graves, but not in this tournament. He is the facilitator his team. He likes to lean on those tanks. And no big surprise, you're going to see that Kalista come out for Jeskla and Tarek is great to go in tandem. It's something that Promise You likes to play frequently, even without the Callista. So, a great unit together. We well, see there Tarek locked in with the Callista. Like you said, something that Mouse Sports could pick up. They just prioritize the set over it, but they still get it in the end. And for a Go Rogue, I feel like you kind of have to pick something that will, you know, kind of be able to go into this Callista. Because right now, Mouse Sports in a very strong position to be able to, you know, ban out either ADCs or supports that can actually do well into this matchup. Yeah, I think my big concern is AD carries. I think you have to take one here. They're actually going to go with the Aphelios. So something that could potentially cause issues. One of the big things with Aphelios is he's great against dive. And often, Mouse's team fights tend to lean around going aggressive, diving on the back line. We saw that last time, uh, last game from the play from Lee. And if you're going to kite back on a champion, Aphelios does that expertly. But now, mid laner still hasn't been picked for either side, and we should likely see the pool pinched a bit. You got going to come out first away from Tolkien. This is something Mouse loved to prioritize for him. Yep, didn't take it in the last game. Wasn't banned, though, if my memory serves me correct. And he didn't decide to go with it either. But like we said, now you're going to be able to have kind of pinch those Trimby in that bot side who was just. Honestly, so amazing in that yeah, last game. He, he, he was huge on the Rakan. But I think the big thing here is that Rakan and Ezreal works really well together because they're both safe and it allows Rakan to do what he wants. He knows Woolite will be in an okay position. But here you need Trimby to be on something that can facilitate Woolite on this Aphelios. You need that element of a safety net. So I'm interested to see what will come out as another ban here. He has played Tom Kench twice in this tournament and that could be something that could cause issue if you're trying to isolate Woolite and take him down. 
So we're gonna go for Malphite Band away and the Urgot. So a Gorog making sure that Renekton has a fairly decent time up in that top side. We did see in our earlier matchup today between Gamer Legion and LDLC how Malphite can just start slapping Renekton if the Renekton doesn't get far enough ahead. Yeah, I like the Brumban here. It's definitely going to be a support pick uh, for a Goro in this situation. Not a fan of the Rakan. I think you need something that's a bit more hands-on appeal for Woolite, but we'll see. Obviously, Trimby had a massive game on it uh, in the last match, and if he performs like that again, it's going to be a massive factor in these team fights. But ultimately, I'm looking at the safety net for Woolite, and this is a little bit of a callback to earlier in the season when we saw Ooh. so much Aphelios Lulu, and it offers that protection. The point-and-click CC from the Polymorph, obviously massive against the likes of a Callist. Uh, big out element of scaling, but we'll have to see how Mouse Sports will answer in terms of their solo lanes. Leader has choice of a lot of the champions like Selena on only a Kali band away. Now Lulu going with the Aphelios. I like that as well. As I said, a lot of safety, polymorph as well as the wild growth means Aphelios, who's already good at negating dives, should be even more safe underneath the tower should they ever try and go for that kind of huge engage on the bot side. But the side of Mouse Sports, they are going to lock in that orb, which means that Set is almost certainly going into the jungle unless we see Leader really want to try and go for it. And this time, he's the one who picks I up the Silas. Shocked. Color me shock. Leader <laughs> going for the Silas. Not too much surprise, just based on what he's been playing in the tournament. And there's a decent amount of ults that he can steal away in this situation. We'll see what the final mid laner is going to be for Sheko Lad. He has a range of options in this situation. Oriana would have been a great fit, but obviously banned away. So. Can turn to things in the likes of the Syndra, is something he leans on often in the tournament. Uh, also have seen him play the Azir. Cassiopeia works as well. This is actually often banned by Mouse in the second rotation, because a lot of the champions that Leader plays don't have fun into the Cassiopeia. And if I'm talking anti-dive, having Cassiopeia, Lulu, and Aphelios is perfect for that. And it's very much going to be Mouse Sports trying to find that backline access in the team fights, and a go rogue saying no. Absolutely, and like you said, a go rogue anti dive. Whereas Mouse Sports, if I'm looking at this, this is all dive all the time. Like they're looking to get those early advantages. You use the Tarak ultimate on top of the set ultimate. You have the Callisted for that safety as well. Like I feel like this is kind of what they want to do. So this is kind of a a clash of ideologies coming in here from these two teams. Yeah, Mouse have the early pressure and they're gonna need it because they want momentum in this game. When I'm looking at the team fight, you gotta look at the first few seconds and that will dictate things for Mouse. If they haven't won the fight by the time that Cosmic Radius times uh, Cosmic Radiance times out. They probably aren't winning the fight because the extended team fighting of a Cassiopeia and an Aphelios, if they are left unchecked, they will decimate. We'll have to wait and see how it all kind of comes around. As you can see, the early set pit will it be as useful as its priority in the draft? You know, lends us to think it will be. As we jump onto the rift. Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking to see that same aggression we saw from Mouse. I'm looking to see the challenging in the fights, but obviously this time they have that early pressure to lean on in their champions. Jessica and Promise Q are always a bot lane who look to challenge in the 2v2, and when you're up against the likes of a Lulu Aphelios, you have to be putting the pressure down. If you give them space to scale, you won't have a good time. And overall, not really going to see any level 1 shenanigans, but... Just taking a step backwards, obviously we we're not going to really see anything crazy in these first few levels or first few minutes, but this is a huge, huge moment now for the side of a Go Rogue. Never have they gotten to the EU Masters Finals. This is also not only that, but a revenge for their Ultra League of Brothers in Kick, who got knocked out in the quarters. It's a lot pretty of big, it, yeah. Because it's also Maus getting revenge for Spring, and again, neither of these teams have gone further than this point in EU Masters. And for either of them to get this would be massive. I think both organizations looking to improve in the standings, but the players, they want to be able to prove that. And particularly, I'm looking at Leader and Obsessed. They've won EU Masters before. Leader's had his time in the LEC, but didn't make that big impact he'd hoped for. But he has been playing so well. They decimated the DAC uh, finals, the DAC playoffs in general. You look at Gamer Legion, who are waiting for them in the finals. The last time they matched up, Mouse smashed them. There's no other way to phrase it. They decimated them. So Mouse, by all means, anything but making the finals would be a disappointment. Throughout the entire of playoffs in the Prime League, Mouse lost a game. One game to Unicorns of Love, which is just shows you just how well they were coming into this tournament. And again, we talk about how this is the, the moment, I suppose, for either of these teams to really look, look for their, their spot in the LEC is Obsess. Could get caught out here by Zanzara. Has to flash himself away as the rest of the ball lane is here. It's level one's there. Flash in here by Zanzara. He has the red buff, and they have to use the heal to get him out. 
It is going to be the Cassiopeia roaming down first as Chekalad is there, but overall, Summoner's Bird, nobody dies. Yeah, I mean, you're actually happy with that for the side of Maus because you trade flashes between junglers, but the end result... Oh, Engage coming in. Two-man Dazzle forces the flash out of Woolite and the exhaust down onto Jeskla. Ignite is ticking, but the rest of Rogue are here. They will not be able to get any return kills, but fantastic aggression from the side of Maus's bot lane does give them a huge advantage in this bot side. So this is so bad for Rogue because not only did the jungle get invaded, I mean, leader's going aggressive here. Oh, we'll have to see now in mid lane. Both flashes burn as leader's going to go in. Oh, Ooh, first blood to snipe. Jeskla. Gets the snipe on the back side. And you can see in the picture and picture, leader also did not go down. And this is a similar start to what we saw in game one. Okay, so I'm going to pull it back a little bit. We saw that bot lane invade from Obsess, and Rogue came and answered it, but the camps had already gone. He'd taken the blue buff, he'd taken the Gromp, and although they chased him out the jungle, Shekolad wasted a ton of time roaming over. And as I'm saying things, we're going to see another engage here. Oh, Shekolad gets jumped on top of, and it's going to be Obsess to clean up the kill. Super nice dive there, punishing the flashless Cassiopeia. And this is what we expect from Mouse. We expect no hesitancy. We expect all gas all the time. And the big thing is, Shekolad lost so much time from roaming down bot, so much farm, and he's now missed a big chunk of that wave as well because of his death. So. This is exactly what I wanted to see from Maus in this game too, that pressure we expect from them in the early game. And this time, we see two kills in the pocket they had at game one, but their composition is fitted to be aggressive into the early mid game. So I want to see them continue this pressure. Now Zanzara fallen a little bit behind, obviously lost those two camps in the jungle and critically wasted a ton of time because he went to chase Obsess out, went to bot lane to cover because obviously Will I had died. And it's just given room to the entire bot side of Mouse. From Obsessed downwards, they've all had a good start in this game. And that pressure leaking out onto the map. It starts from the jungle, you don't really get the tempo going, and then it leaks into bot side, leaks into mid lane. And that's kind of how Mouse have typically come and taken their games in this in this tournament. I remember Obsessed prioritized this set. It's a contested pick between both junglers. He prioritized it early, and Sanzara's alternative was this Sejuani. The Skarna was banned away. The thing with Sejuani is you don't have as much early skirmishing power as these other junglers. When you're challenged, you can find it difficult. And I like that that has been their game plan for minute one. They've executed on that now. Dragon spawning up soon, but I don't think it's going to be too high a priority to look for right now. Obsessed tenons lean more towards getting his laners ahead. But you do see they have priority bots, so they could actually lean into this. Obsessed will clear the vision out. Might go for it. They have got priority bot and is a pushing wave in mid lane as well. So leader, as you can see there on the map, gonna be able to get himself a nice little bit of pressure. This push towards this. We're gonna see this. the mid roams. Yeah, mid roams coming in. This will be a four v two. They have got a TP onto Zen. That's gonna be a TP coming in though from Tolkien. A little bit late though. As Obsess misses the face breaker, but not able to get anything else off it. Well, Light is down, and they're turning straight away into Zenda, who is just TC for days. They trade two for one. Probably gonna be a three for one. Not quite. Trimby has got his flash available, and overall, it's just win, win, win for Mouse. Yeah, beautifully executed from Mouse, and you know, I was right. They wouldn't go for the dragon. They go for support in the lanes, obsessed playing the set, beautiful in these dive situations. And they managed to get those two kills. And yes, there was a trade back, but the critical thing is Willite dies again. He misses even more farm. And we're seeing an 800 gold lead already. We said, if you give this Aphelios space, he will scale up. They haven't given him any. Aphelios has, you know, obviously got the... the the mantra, the tag, I suppose, of, you know, 200 years, but he's lost that a lot, you know? Got a hell of a lot of nerfs over a couple of patches and just isn't that one-for-all ADC that kind of covers yourself as such, as we can see the Glacial Prison finished off. Sanzara, that's got to feel bad. Your your ultimate's going to be I mean, used before you can even use your that, ultimate. That is the worst feeling when playing against a Silas, when he steals your ultimate pre-six, and it is a huge one. I think the big thing with the Sejuani ult for leader is that you can chain it together with his own stun and just extend that CC chain. And honestly, See, the AP ratio is pretty nutty on that ability, so definitely makes your skirmishing even better. Now, Obsess, once more, putting that pressure on mid, allowing leader to play aggressive and push up, try and crash this wave in. Well, Trimby is here, so it would be a odd-numbered fight for the side of Maus, but this is kind of something we noticed, and you mentioned in the first game, is that we see the jungle support roaming and gravitating towards that mid to make sure the Chekolad gets himself ahead. Yeah, pretty common for Rogue. I think Zanzara and Trimby are really good at pairing up together, and it's one thing that Trimby excels at. But right now, 
All bot laner Maus is here to try and contest this blue buff on respawn. Yeah, it is going to be a pretty easy take. Now one on the side of a go rogue wants to be able to take that one. Don't want the fight either at all. As you can see, there's about 20 CS lead, and that's going to be a blue buff into a Cloud Drake. Cloud Drake, one of the harder ones to take, has got a hell of a lot of attack speed and does a hell of a lot of damage, but no one from the side of go rogue means this is free for Maus. And the big thing is, taking the dragon now means that in 30 seconds, when the Herald spawns, there's nothing really tying you to the bot side of the map. You can switch your bot lane up, or you can just look to go for that. And if your bot lane has to play safe, you don't give up the dragon. So nice timing here from Obsessed, but I think actually they're looking to go for a dive again. Maybe capitalize on some plates here. There is a control war that will spot them out, but ultimately Wallet and Trimby have to run away. They have no recourse from their team. And leader, gonna land the Kingslayer on the Trimby. For the tanky boy, a lot of damage going down as well. The Polymorph used. That's a 4v2 gank coming in on the bot side of Goro, playing very respectfully, backing themselves away. They don't give up any kills, but like you said, massive wave and plates gonna be given over to the side of Maus. I mean, look at the CS difference bot lane. This is what you need to do. You're playing into Lulu Aphelios, you need to be doing this. And it's over a thousand gold lead already. And remember, this is pre-Herald. If the Herald gets picked up by Maus, they could capitalize and find more, but I like that this is going down bot lane, so Rogue answer on the other side of the map. They at least take something. Got to find answers in these times. It's not great looking for the side of a Goro, but overall we've seen them come back. We have seen them even in the Ultra League and in the New Masters use, you know, kind of reset themselves, come back into a lane. Will Maus let them though? That's the question. I think you got to notice the stylistic difference between these two teams because we've highlighted the importance of mid, we've highlighted the bot, bot lane relevancy, but if this was reversed, Maus would be trying to fight these. These dies, they would opt into them to try and take the fights, whereas you see Rogue just back away and play defensive. And actually, during the group stages, we saw Maus lose to Gamer's Origin specifically because there was a dive from Go, and Maus tried to fight it and lost. But Rogue, more respectful, will play back, will play defensive, and try and wait for their moment later in the game. Show you how far Woolite is behind. Trimby has his level six before Ro Rogue's Woolite has his. Uh, the ultimate is available to the Lulu before the Aphelios. That is, that is so crippling for an ADC that, like you said, is looking to scale, pick up those items, get those levels, and just try and become a late game monster. Yeah, and Woolite is just going to be picking up the side wave. We'll try and keep it frozen and just get some farm here. But that means on either side of the map, Mouse are going to be able to start to capitalize and look to get some more plates. They've already taken that first tower and they're not going to stop. They're not going to hold up. They're going to look to try and get as many as possible in their pocket. And I think what I realize is you, you just have to push the wave out. You can't just freeze forever. You need to try and answer some plates on this side of the map. But uh, Tolkien is going to be heading down, and that's one of the big things with the Orn. You have a fair amount of wave clear to burn through. And at this point in the game, Willite isn't really a threat. There's no actual attack damage for Willite. There's only the attack speed from the Berserker Greaves, so at this point, Tolkien's going to feel almost invincible. Repel being popped down by Chekolad into the mid lane. We actually see here as well, the wild growth used immediately by Leader as he was timing out on him. This should be the mid lane turret going down. I like this move from the side of Rogue. You can't really do anything onto your side lane, so take probably what is the most important turret in the game in that mid lane tier one. Get all that gold into your solo laners. They turn around, Glacial Prison does land, forces the flash out from the leader, but it's the rest clapped. of Maus are trying to pinch them in. They're trying to see if they can go for this. There's an immediate showstopper into Flash, trying to get him off on top of this. They're in a bit of a corner. Promise Q has been stunned up, has to use the Cosmic Radiance a little early, keeps himself alive. And overall, no one goes down. Zanzara and Promise Q both getting out with slivers of HP, but while this is all happening, it's just Jessica getting money. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing, is that they're mitigating the pressure here. Oh, Tolkien's looking for more. Tolkien goes in, Call of the Forge God comes down. Chekolad has been a little bit caught out, unfortunately for him. Nice little move with the Miasma to stop the second proc of the ultimate, but overall, a pick is a pick, and a Goro falling further and further behind. I mean, I think this is the difference that you see. It's that Roll go for the cross-map plays. I like, we'll go for something mid, because they're pressuring top, but... Maus aren't willing to concede. They're like, you want to go for mid, we'll fight you on that. Do we have a cluster with us? No, we don't care. They will look to skill check you on those, and it was close. It was a close fight. We nearly saw members of Maus go down, but they managed to find the advantage in that scenario, and I think this is a big difference, is that when they have a composition that leans into their aggression, they can't find success. And now, Blade of the Moon King finished for Jeskla. There's just been a BF sword picked up by Walleye. That's all his gold into that, and the power difference is monumental.
I mean, Callista is always going to be more relevant early compared to the likes of Nephilios, but to have that item completed is massive. And they're just spoon feeding gold into Jeskla. He's got himself a 30 CS lead, 35 as such, and just giving him all the damn plates I mean, that's, he could need. That's nine plates so far. Oh my god, that is a 2,300 gold lead. That's disgusting. Yep, it, it's honestly massive at this point. Nine plates have been fed into Jasper. He's getting so much gold as a result of this. And he just bounds on Zara, but Zara so should, a bit too tanky. Should be able to Arctic Assault over the back of the wall there. Still very, very tanky. Sejuani has got his Cinder Hulk on top of his jungle item. So again, still very good. Quick look at the items. So far, Arcade built for Orn, for Tolkien in the top side. You are still waiting for your first item if you're leader. But you're not really too unhappy with that. And on the other side, you're still only sitting on a BF sword on this Ophelios. But silver linings, you have got that steer, tier tack stacking for Checolad and a Blade of the Room King as well. But when Light Vigil goes down, they have the Gravitum forcing the flash from the side of Jeskla, which is perfectly done. Dazzle as well. TP is here. Now they're going to try and turn this straight away on top of Orn. He gets Polymorph. They're going to try to silence, but there is the uh, Callisto with the key to Tarek safe. It's oh. a great call of the Forge God. Oh, it's and massive. a double kill for Leader and a Cosmic Radiance to keep almost everybody alive. And it's still a shutdown. But Mao is coming into this game too, and they're ready to play. I mean, Mao's just don't give any wiggle room. You try and engage, and they turn it around. A Tolkien there TPing in into, honestly, a precarious spot, but he finds a beautiful ult to sync up with Obsess and they'll be able to translate that into the dragon. And it looks a bit precarious, but I think the big thing to note is Jessica's flash here was perfect just before the root and the ult connect, and that gives them space. And then when Tolkien comes in again, responds perfectly, he uses his W to stop the CC from coming in, and then once he's repositioned, he looks for the re-engage. Ult knocks up three, Ooh. obsessed with the follow-up on the back of that. It's just perfect. And yes, Obsess goes down, the Cosmic Radiance doesn't connect, but the impact is made. 50 minutes or oh, just shy of, and we're looking at a three and a half thousand gold lead for Mao. They've got three kills onto the Silas, who now has the Hextech GLP, or the Super Soaker, as some people like to call it. You've got just so much utility, so much options available to you. And unfortunately for a Go Rogue, you're now on the, the shoes on the other foot. You're waiting for time, you're waiting for money, and you're waiting to scale to try and come back into this game. Caveat, I will say, is this is more suitable for Rogue. Rogue do prefer to lean into that. They are happy to give over resources. Not this much, by all means, but they are happy to lean into the scaling a bit more because their team fight tends to be stellar. Will I and Shekalad capable of putting out a ton of damage if they can survive? But this is also how Mouse want to play the game. I think this is more what I expected characteristically from the teams, and Mouse won't give you any space to breathe. They'll take this Reptile here, I expect this to probably go down mid lane, look to capitalize on that and open up the map, but alternatively could throw it down top. Oh, the now. they do land the prison, but it's not really going to be enough as Tolkien just trying to be run down. He does have to use the Call of Forge God and he will be killed. The TP comes in, there's the Showstopper on top of Zanzara, but there's Chekolad taking up another shutdown. They get a hell of a lot of damage. They only trade two for one. Chekolad just survives underneath the tower, and now Jeskla needs to be a hell of a lot He's more careful. Off. He is backed off. They have to flash. He uses the heal. He's just trying to run him down, and it's a pretty damn good kill. Rogue not out of it just yet. That was huge there for Rogue. They managed to find the kill on the Tolkien. Ultimately, I actually think Obsessed made the wrong call. He ulted Zanzara and not Shekolad. You need to take the Cassiopeia out the fight, and then Jeskla and Promise Q rotating over, but the big thing is they get split. So we'll watch that over again. Ultimately, Tolkien does turn away just in time. It buys time for the team, but ultimately, Sekolad has the damage and Conqueror stacked up to deal with it. Now here, Obsess ult Sanzara. This is definitely the wrong choice in this situation because Shekolad just kills Leader without a second thought. And yes, you kill the Sejuani, but Shekolad was the big factor. And then Jeskla rotating over is split from his support. And yes, he's got a lead, but Trimby buffed up Wolite. And with all the Crescendum stacked up, there's no way you win that. I mean, I'm going to put in quotation marks 1v1. Kind of cheating with the support buffs, but either way, Rogue and Sabak, the mouse aren't going to stop here. Mouse lick their wounds and come straight back into that mid lane. Gonna be able to take that tower. Shelly still has another good push in hers. We can see all five members from Mouse now grouping up into this mid lane. 
Gonna maybe try and push the issue on this, but they don't feel confident enough as now we're looking at an Infiniate, a Leandri's Torment for the side of Chekulad. You're starting to get these big kind of scaling items on top of you and you you just need to take a little bit of a breath of your mouth. You're still ahead, you still have a very good early composition. You just need to, you know, execute on it properly. Absolutely, and the big thing is now you've taken down the mid lane, bot lane tower, top lane's pretty close to falling as well. The big thing for me is looking at how you transition further because often it can be hard to take down those tier twos. And I'm looking at the dragon. You've got two in the pocket already, a minute 20 till the next. Mouse need to start to threaten that soul as early as possible because given more time, Rogue will get into a more comfortable spot to be able to contest you. We already saw what Willite was cap capable with just a BF sword. You give him more items and he will become a menace. We do see Jessica Runans. That's a big spike for a cluster. One item versus two is always a feels good and, well, rinse and repeat is Tolkien now going to be caught up underneath this little bit too much damage. The Miasma perfectly placed and this is just rinse, repeat, keep going for it, but mouse are rotating. Yeah, Recall's trying to come in, but I don't think they'll get that in time. Promise can use to buy something. Dazzle is going to be landing straight away. They're going to try to use the Petrifying Gaze, and Leader steals one himself as well. They are able to turn this one around, but the Petrifying nice, Gaze oh. that was stolen, able to be turned oh, on the Chekolad! Chekolad, though, does take one with him. And while that's happening, you can see in the picture and picture in top side, Sagenda's just pushing in, and Zara gets out. That's Obs disaster. Obsessed held the ult. He didn't think they needed it. He, think he thought they could get away. He thought after the CC connected, it was enough. But Shekolad again. We said the mid lane was important here, and he comes out on top over leader. And this is where a real test comes in. Obsessed, what are you doing here? Obsessed, you don't need to be here right now. You have no ultimate, you have no flash. He hasn't been spotted just yet, but Dragon going to be conceded by Mao, as you feel. I feel like they can't really go in on top of this, as you still have the Moonlight Visual, you still have He the... has to steal this. I don't think he can. He oh, he, so he's just going to recall. I mean, that, that's five minutes. We were talking about the soul being the way. You've just added five minutes to Mouse's soul. And when that's one of your big win conditions, when you need that early pressure, losing that is devastating, honestly, because it just gives that Cassiopeia, that Aphelios, five minutes more time. And it's so frustrating playing against the Cassiopeia as the Orn because the Miasma comes down, it's like, well, what can you do? You can't ult, you can't dash, you're useless. And it was a good pick by Rogue, but ultimately the collapse comes in for Mouse. Sheko lad, it looks like he's gonna go down here. The ult is dodged away. Obsessed has a beautiful flash, but he doesn't ult here. He doesn't think he needs to use it. And actually, because of that, ends up going down. I think the problem was at the end, he was standing on the grounded, but make the decision to move out the grounding and ult him. I think it was just a disrespectful play. They thought, oh, Shekalad's definitely dead here. And the one-for-one -one trade meant there was no way they were going to be able to contest that dragon. Shekalad, again, bit of a rough start for him in this game, similar to game one, but he's just coming back and time and time again, proving that he is of a caliber of LEC mid laner. And in, don't get me wrong, LEC is stacked with mid laners. I mean, you have to think about who is the last mid laner to come from Rogue? Larson. And you are looking like you could be the next mid laner to come from Rogue, and you are doing a good job of it. Mouse are starting this Baron, though. It's halfway already. Halfway down. They have got a huge amount of spears, though. I don't know if they want to take that full fight, though, just yet, as everyone from the side of a Go Rogue was roaming in. And that's the scary part right now. You can't even take that dragon, because it's not even a 50-50. You have the Callista, but you're not confident enough. If you know, if you lose that smite battle, the game is over. It's very difficult to come back from that, but you're starting to feel a bit of the desperation from Mouse. We saw that massive early lead. It's 20 minutes in the game, and the goal lead is significantly smaller. It's less than a thousand. That is not how you wanted the trajectory of this game to have gone, by no means. And they're starting to feel like we have to force Baron. We have to be a little bit desperate because they are starting to ramp up. Shekolad and Willite. You can see Shekolad in particular, 9,500 gold. Actually the highest in the game. He has overtaken Jeskler, and this is on a Cassiopeia. This champion has no limits on the scaling. Thank you very much, Observers, for showing us that. You can see, even though there's a 2,000 gold difference in that bot side, it doesn't really mean anything at this point. I feel like the, you know, Maos need to start making proactive plays, need to start looking for these kind of, you know, picks that Rogue just kind of did. And even though, yes, Tolkien wasn't worth that much gold, it just delayed and prolonged and made it so that Maos could not end quicker. Well, that's the problem is that what play do you go for? Baron is the big thing you can force Rogue to fight, but you can see Rogue are happy to approach it slowly. They have the vision set up. 
Here we go. They're going to try and maybe go for it. There's the TP coming in there. They have stolen the Glacial Prison. Well, Light was not really around, and now they see him. So they know it's a full 5v5. They get the teleport. They back themselves away. But now do Rogue just try and look for this little bit of vision control? Looks like they get all the vision control they want. They back themselves out. Overall, you got the you got the teleport. That's a win. Sure. The TP is exactly what you wanted there, and definitely the right call for Mouse to back away once you got that. You are going to be able to transition this into a Tier 2 mid, but ultimately, this isn't drastically changing the state of the game. You have to capitalize on this TP being down. Resets are coming in for Mouse. They're going to have to push their waves out in, on the side of the map and once again set up for that play, but Dragon is the next objective on the table, and you can't afford to ignore that, so... Oh, Zanzara. Zanzara gets dazzled, gets face breaking as well. They're forced to use the ultimate from the Lulu and the oh, Glacial Prison. Woolite, though, is very, very strong right now. Here is the call of the Forge God on the backside. Doesn't hit anybody. And those are big ultimates. And Leader, what happened, Leader? You got caught out between a rock and a hard place, and now Rogue smell blood. Leader, run, boy. Run as fast as you can. Delay. Try and get yourself out if you possibly can. He's just given them a full ring around the Rosie. Will he be able to Try and find himself out. No, because Jekyll adds on the return. Sagenda does have to back away as he's just not healthy enough right now. But overall, leader, you have to try and get some kind of an outplay. You will not get it. Wooler gets a kill. And again, we're delaying and delaying and delaying. And Rogue are reaping the benefits. Absolutely. And they can actually look to challenge this dragon. I am feeling less and less confident about Mouse's chances to take a full 5v5. Rogue love to take team fights and they have a composition that will play to it expertly. They have no TP on Chekalab, but he is so damn close to that Rabadon's death cap. He's got the two needlessly large rods. You can see now the Runan's Hurricane finished up for Ophelios. I feel like the time is now. You need to fight at this next dragon in 30 seconds if you're Mouse, or the game could just be too far gone. Yeah, you need a win as well. It needs to be decisive enough that you can get the Baron off the back of it, because if you don't, I am really gonna be concerned. You can see actually, Looks like the decision might be to give the Dragon up and lean over to the Baron, but I think maybe just getting the vision control in that area. Leader is back on the map and walking over, but Rogue have mid lane priority. Have got the Abyssal Mask and Sunfire Cape or an orna ornamented up, as I say. So they now start up the Baron. Dragon is live, no one from the side of Agoro going for it. They are fully fully looking at this Baron play. You can see this is the final one for Mouse. Gonna be late. They need to try and go, but Chekolat has not got TP. Did go back to finish off his Rabadon's death cap, so a big, big power spike coming in with a blue buff as well. Mouse still on this Baron, down to below half HP. Zanzara, Woolite just tentatively moving forward. 4,000 HP now on the Baron as Mouse. There we go, Sagenda goes in. They do land on top of Promise Cube, but he's not the one you want. There is the Call of the Forge Gods. They need to try and kill Zanzara. They will kill him. It's a one for none. They have to use the Cosmic Radiance, but the Baron is regening health. There's the Moonlight right. Vigil. Chekolet flashes in. Chekolet gets the stun, and Chekolet gets the double kill. He's going for it again. He's going to try and keep himself in this, but it's going to be three kills for one. And now Rogue can turn to the Baron. They have the DPS to do it. Obsess needs to find a Miracle Steal, but he knows he can't. He's going for the reset, and Rogue have found the team fight they needed. Mouse with the wit's end, and they lose their fight, and they'll lose this Baron. They will lose the Baron. Baron, despite not having a jungler, and you can see here, they almost, they get Sanzara, but they just haven't got anything else. I mean, that's the big thing, is that you need to win the fight on this first Tarakul, because you can see there's tentativity from Rogue. Zanzara goes down, they essentially just given up because of the Cosmic Radiance, but as soon as this is down, Rogue know they can step up. Watch Shekolad and Woolite go and aggressive, particularly Shekolad. Two twin fangs is enough to take down that Callista, and at that point, the fight is already over. These backline carries are online. And this is why you saw Chekolite go for that reset. Make sure he had that Rabadon's death cap. Rogue are so tantalizingly close to that finals berth. The first time in a Go Rose organization's history to get to the EU Masters finals. And Maus, they're kind of, you know, not really much else they can do. They got the set pick, they put huge priority onto it, and it's just not really doing much for them right now. It had the impact in the early game, but this is the problem. Mouse's style, Mouse's composition, it needed them to be aggressive and carry the momentum, but they got Stonewall, the dragon being picked up, the misplayed fights, the picks coming out from Zamzara and Shekolad, all gave space for Rogue to get back in the game, and now they're hitting their spikes and are looking to take some towers.
And I'm seeing an unfortunately common thread. In the last game, Mouse lost because they didn't have Leader with them. Leader now split pushing in a side lane, trying to get money, trying to see if he can maybe go for a flank, I guess. And that's go exactly what he's going to go for. He goes get the TP out. They are going to chuck down the Miasma right on top of him. The Dazzle goes in, flash it. Just land on the check He tries to get the Petrifying Gate. As it's all out brawl. As the towers go down, they're doing it. A Go Rogue have no more, more, more in the tank. And they jump straight in with the Fates call. It will be four clean kills. Leader, I'm so Sorry, I doubted you. Four for none, and Mouse are back. Beautiful team fight there from Mouse. They find the backline access, and that is the big thing. You kill the Cassiopeia, and then there is not much protecting Woolite. And I think we'll watch this replay one more time. It's Rogue feeling confident. They look for the dive, essentially, but quickly realize TP coming in the ult, they have to back away. Promise Q with that beautiful double stun on both those carries, and in the mix, Cassiopeia comes down, the Cosmic Radiance is there, and I said it before, you need to have won the team fight by the time the Cosmic Radiance expires, and Mouse did. Absolutely beautiful team fight coming out from Mouse, but unfortunately for them, they can't really gain anything because of it. Yes, you get the initial gold, fantastic for you, and I gotta give a big props to Promise Q. He full on committed to that fight, yeah. which literally made they could actually go for it. But a Go Rogue still very much in the driving seat right now. Yeah, I mean, it's tentative, but we need more of that from Mouse. I think the big thing is a lot was invested, the TP flank from leader, the flash from Promise Q to make that work, but ultimately, every fight needs to be you making things difficult for Shekolad and Woolite. Otherwise, you won't come out ahead. Now, Dragon up in two and a half minutes, Baron in three. That's likely where we're going to see the next big fight. And again, I need to see Mouse finding the angles and making things difficult for the backline because they will never win a front to back team fight. They will never win a team fight where they're just hitting Zanzara or Shigenda. It's just never going to happen. Overall, still very much in the balance right now. Go Rogue, still feeling pretty strong. Checko Lad, three and a half items, has got that stopwatch as well in the back pocket. Triple lifesteal for Jeskla on this Kalista. He knows he just needs to stay alive to try and burn through these tanks right now. And it's just looking so damn good for Rogue. I feel like it's going to take another miracle play from someone like Leader, someone like Tolkien, to really come back into this one. I mean, the agency is on Mouse. Mouse needs to be the ones finding the angles. And I expect to see Rogue setting up on the objective first. It's very hard to walk into them. And Mouse essentially needs to see them set up with the Dragon and then find angles to approach it. For Go Rogue, feel like you can just take it easy. You have massive objective control with the Cephalios and Cassiopeia. You can just burn these ones down if Mouse aren't prepared to fight you. But I think the critical thing for me is the vision control. This has to be on point for Rogue. You need to know that there's no one behind you, no one coming from flanks that you don't see. Because that is the big punishing thing, is if Leader finds access on your backline and you don't see it coming, because if you can throw a Miasma down and be prepared for it, you're in a much more comfortable position. Agenda, of course, on the Renekton, going to start slowly scaling back. Hasn't really found that backline access. Hasn't needed to, I suppose, in this game, but hasn't really been able to find that backline access that we so often associate with the Renekton. However, if he's allowed three or four seconds, it could just be catastrophic. So again, so damn close. Both teams have win conditions. Both teams need perfect setup in order to come out on top. Actually, big thing here, the reset came in from Rogue, and Mouse have used this opportunity to get access to the Dragon area. So Rogue don't want to face check. They're going to try and get control of Baron and match out in that regard. Dragon is the one spawning sooner, and Mouse are unwilling to give up mid lane priority, especially when they know Shekelad isn't there. You need your Cassiopeia there in advance because the Miasma, the Petrifying Gaze are such massive tools for keeping your backline safe. So Moe's, Mouse, Moe's, Mouse feeling confident here to uh, push in and get some vision control in the area. There is a TP available for Zagenda and for Chakola. TP for leader should be up at about three or four seconds. So it's going to be an all out brawl. The only thing that's missing is Promise Q's flash on either side. And here we go, Obsess. Flashing over, there's the TP as well. Not really going to be getting anything from it, though. Dragon has spawned Baron not far behind it. I mean, if they take the Dragon, that's fine, but it doesn't give you a massive power increase until you're hitting that soul. And Baron's spawning. This is an extremely fast Baron from Rogue, by the way. I am worried about this. We did talk about it. They have full objective control, and already Tolkien 
and Jeskla just moving over to it. Do they just try and burn this one down? Yes, they do. And you can see, gonna go for this one here. It's Hulk and a promise you are there. They're gonna try and catch out the Renekton and they will. As you can see, Obsess up towards the backside of this, and that means that Go Rogue don't feel comfortable. Here's the call of the Forge God. He will not get his call of the Forge God off, but they do land Obsess on the backside. Now, check all that, trying to go in. It's actually Woolite who's just shredding with these Chakrams, just going in on top of the jungler. Leader jumps in, but it's a double kill coming in for Woolite. It's going to be a triple kill for Woolite, a quadra kill for Woolite as he styles on Mouse Sports, and that's almost certainly gonna mean the game. Will Light goes huge on the Aphelios and he just shreds every single champion put in front of him. He decimates them and now they're looking to end the game. It's 15 seconds on Obsessed, but the rest are 30. I think they can take this one on the series. I think they have done it. A go rogue, the number two seed from the Ultra Liga, avenging kick who got knocked out in quarters, will go further than they've ever gone before as they knock down the Nexus turrets of Mouse Sports, the preferred favorites of the EU Masters, and a Go Rogue will make it to the finals. What a huge game for them. I mean, just the fact that we saw that aggression from Mouse that we expect, they got the lead and it wasn't enough. Rogue were tempered, they knew when to find their windows, and I think every single member of the team fulfilled the role. I can't, I completely agree. Honestly, it just felt like a go road had Mouse's number. They knew what they wanted to do in game one, game two. Again, very small little mistakes coming into the early game, but they regrouped, they brought themselves back, they didn't let it get to them, and they punched so hard that it was just nothing this Mouse could do. And it felt like, you know, you can see some of the potential of Mouse. The early game was great. That team fight when they were massively behind in terms of the scaling was also great. But the problem was you have to do that every time. And that last team fight around the Baron didn't go as to planned. And you could see that Rogue were waiting for that opportunity just to decimate. It was some stellar play. And the fact that we get a pentakill and a quadra kill, we can see those two massive carries for Rogue just popping off. Yeah, well, the Ultra Liga has secured a spot as the second EU Masters Summer finalist. And after the break, we'll be joined by Zanzara. So stay tuned for that. Despite being only two years old, Ultraliga is one of the most successful leagues amongst the Euros. Even though Rogue is the only LEC organization to field a secondary team in Poland, the international results have been great. This split, Ultraliga has had 11 complete rookies, the most we've ever had, join the league and trying to make a name for themselves. Some of them made things competitive, but in the end, 2020 was all about Kick and Agaro. They once again met in the finals, but this time it was Kick who emerged victorious with a 3-1 scoreline. Coming into the EU Masters, Poland was the most represented nationality with 18 Polish players in the tournament. Among them, there were many stars, but one particular player from Ultraliga has stood up from the rest. You guessed it right, it's in another Polish jungler, the early game master, Szladon. Known for his aggressive style, he will always find a way to create advantages for his team while still being up in CS and XP over your jungler. That's just the way it is. For a show, show them how you outplay. Go and check the replay. Dubs like all day, boy. You better know. Know that it might be just a little high fee. Trying to call about these watches. Go, cause the games are straight fire. Every team fight coming down to the wire. The whole world trying just to look like us. Take a look at Julie. Wish you played like us. Natana shook reality. You're facing a tragedy. When the European legacy comes sucking down your pride to be those feelings of anxiety. The future you don't want to see. The wrath of our whole dynasty it spells LEC. This could be.
Welcome back to the European Masters. A G A Goroga need to say just secure it there. Uh, the last final spot for tomorrow. And joining us is Zanzara, the jungler for A Goroga. Uh, first of all, congratulations. <laughs> and I love the snowman hello, hello. behind you. I love it. Yeah, yeah, it's my Nunu. It's like my Nunu. I'm I'm Vilump, and this is my Nunu. <laughs> hey, Zanzara, it's the second time you're kicking out Mazda the tournament. Back in spring, it was actually in the quarterfinals, and now doing it again. Um, how did you manage to do it? Easy. Look, <laughs> okay. it's like strategy, guys. I will explain you everything. Look, like first game. You ch like, we win coin flip, of course. Like, we win coin flip, you take blue side, you first pick Skarner. There is no counterplay, of course, if they don't ban the f free game. Like, it's doomed, right? 1-0. You can, like, it's... B and then after that, you think it's best of fun, right? Okay. And after that, okay, they ban Skarner. They learn the lesson. But it's too late, guys, because what is coming? Of course, it's Johnny Rennington. It's doomed. Yeah. No, but of course, like, our mid laner played a bit good. You know, like, bot lane. I mean, bot lane, guys, doesn't matter. But, like... The main thing is uh, Sedrani. Yeah, I was going to say, looking at the Se draft, you they p banned away Skarner and they first picked the set away. So was Sed were you like, okay, I was expecting this. I've got Sedjuani up my sleeve. Yes, of course. No, but like, I didn't expect, I didn't expect Sedrani, guys. But my coach come to me and say, it's time. It's time. It's time. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he said, he said, like, last year Masters, we picked Sedrani. Renningston two times. So right now, it's, it's time to show them the power again. And it's worked, guys. It's worked. <laughs> so, Zara, let's be honest, though, because in the beginning of the match, it kind of looked like Maus was taking over the game. And at one point, you just took the game back. Like, how did that happen? Because looking at these highlights we have, offset with the mid-dive, we were like, yeah, this game, it's going to go to Maus. Uh, it's, I mean, we're running down, guys, a bit. A bit early game, we're running down. But, like, my ADK didn't put the ward. The invade took my blue buff. I was tilted. But after that, <laughs> we, but we, we know one we know one thing, guys, and this is this is the one thing what win you in the game. The thing is outscale, and if you are outscale, you always win. So we know, like we, we say, like okay, guys, let's chill a bit. We outscale, and it happens, guys. We just put one free one, outscale. Look this one, outscale. Look, <laughs> it's like counter, a magic word. No now. counterplay, guys. Yeah. No counterplay. Basically, I mean that's all. It's true, kind of. I mean, Mouse, they were showing signs of what Mouse is known for, right? Just diving non-stop. They got a huge mid-dive going. They had a huge team fight on the mid-tower with your own ult and stuff like this. But it felt like you guys, you found picks here and there. Woodite was picking up kills under the radar. Mouse still had a gold lead, but in the team fights, I don't know, you guys are just the best team fighting team in your Masters. Yeah, I mean, guys, we should give the credit to our mid laner. He called some stuff would give us a uh, good uh, back uh, in this game. So like our mid laner was like kind of macro genius this game, you know, <laughs> but after he died two times to Cassidy in the first game, uh, we don't respect him anymore, you know, so like after this game, he can come back a bit in our eyes. So, uh, but I think, I think our macro was good and team fights because of everyone, guys, because like whole team is good. We work together, guys, we had a plan and we follow that. And this is what lead us to the win. Humble and defeat and humble and victory, it sounds like, Sanzara. Uh, tomorrow you're taking yep. on uh, the, well, the third seed from the dark region, is it? from the prime league. It's going to be Team Gamer Legion. Um, how do you feel about that? Because it's going to be a best of five. Yeah, um, I mean, we played some games. We played like three games in group versus them. So, and it was to one, right? Yeah, we lose one game because I pick Evelyn, but let's not talk <laughs> about that one. <laughs> Let I think, guys, they, they will prepare better. They will bounce Karner from the first game, so like we need more champs. So we'll see. Like we have some hiding strategy, guys. I hope I hope I can pull uh, them off, or like a coach might put me on Sidran again. They never know, guys. Never know. Yeah. yeah. So, but I, I overall we didn't have like much problems versus them in groups. But uh, as you see, guys, they they kind of improved like a lot from play of their. Uh, a bracket they they beat out the uh, ldlc a lot of good teams so i think they improve uh, they they have like better drafts right now for sure than before they're more confident than them so i hope it's gonna be uh, close series but i think it's still gonna be in our favor yeah so you're telling me hidden picks and no more elevelin and you've got it in the bag <laughs> yeah yeah it's ours, good choice it's ours. <laughs> they have not enough bounce they have not enough bounce this is this is the main thing guys I respect it. So Zara, thank you uh, for your time. Enjoy uh, the win. And we'll see you tomorrow for that uh, well big final in the European Masters.
Thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Yeah, it's going to be their first title if they take it home. Ultra Liga hasn't had a title so far. I, I love him. I love him. Like, yeah, he's, you got to love him, great. right? Uh, but as I was saying, like, Ultra Liga has never had a title so far in the European Master. Mm -hmm. And let's see, such a strong region, not have a single title. It's so weird to me. Yeah, I mean, Poland has definitely looked like one of the strongest regions. France as well. But the DAC, they had two teams in the semis. One of them made it Gamer Legion, the third seed from the DAC region. So, I mean... It'll be a first win for both these teams, but especially for the Ultra League in terms of regions. Yeah, tomorrow it's uh, gonna go, all going to go down. It's going to be a best of five, the finals for the European Masters 2020 Summer Split. It all concludes tomorrow. Tomorrow, The stage is set for a finals tomorrow. Agi O'Rogue versus Team Gamer Legion. Hopefully see you tomorrow around 6. And uh, from here, have a good night. It's the finals. You don't want to miss it. Definitely not, especially with Cesar and the Snowman. Or was it Nunu, right? Nunu Mulam. himself. Gamer Legion can get this, they can, and now the curtain call comes through, the engage opens up. It is going to be another defensive play by Wisdom, trying to buy some time as he is grouping up LD. Oh my god, the life bomb disintegration ray! Absolutely monstrous! Now Vateo and LD and Tinks are in a trap! It was a trap, boys! And Knight is going to chase him down for the triple. Around is there, Promise Q, just keeping everybody busy. Tolkien is there, Obsess is down. Double kill for Chekolan. They're trying to just see if they can catch out leader. He catches him with the Kingslayer. Triple kill for Chekolan. Quadra kill for Chekolan. And he's got a mark off this game with a Penta kill. Just going in on top of the jungler leader. Jumps in, but it's a double kill. Coming in for Woolite. It's going to be a triple kill for Woolite. Quadra kill.